Welcome back. So if you recall in the last video we had done a manual launch of the space shuttle and a manual orbital insertion and ended up with a slightly elliptical orbit which was pretty stable with an eccentricity of 0 0.09. So in this video we're gonna first uh, try to uh, calculate our uh, orbital inclination angle to see how far off are from a, uh, an equatorial orbit and then uh, try to affect um, a change in the orbital inclination angle. So first thing what we need to do is we need to accelerate time and bring uh, the shuttle around on the front view to about as close to the equatorial plane as possible. And um, then we'll be able to read uh, the speed, which we'll need in future calculations. Let's accelerate that again a little bit. Okay, that's about close enough. So we'll slow down to 0 0.001 second per second. And we're going to make note of uh, the uh, tangential speed at this point on the orbital plane, um, which is 8.149 kilometers per second and that's going to be important we're going to need that in our uh, calculations a little bit further down the line so at that point um, we can go ahead and perform a maneuver uh, which will uh, give us the actual current orbital inclination angle um, this uh, maneuver is based on uh, a process uh, published in Nick Dargahi's book, the Space Simulator Pilot's Handbook, which you can find a link to in the uh, video description. So first thing we need to do is we need to prograde the shuttle um, using the autopilot. Prograding is essentially um, pointing the shuttle into the uh, direction of the thrust vector or the the, the uh, velocity vector where the uh, shuttle is heading essentially the next thing we need to do is we need to roll the spacecraft um, until the pitch not the roll but the pitch is as close to 90 as possible it's about almost there and the reason why pitch changes with roll when you're at uh, you're about parallel to the surface of the earth is explained in uh, Dargahi's book as well it's a little bit involved so I won't go any in much further detail in here but uh, um, there's definitely a reason to the madness so let me go ahead and see how close I can to 90 here uh, no. so, uh, yeah that's probably as good as we get once we have that, we're going to go ahead and pitch down, going straight at the Earth. So we're going to pitch to zero degrees on the pitch. A pitch of zero means we are pointing straight at the Earth or the planetary body we're orbiting. So let's down further. Oops, we exceeded that. There, that's good enough. Okay. So now, if we read the roll angle, it will read 2.7 degrees. Um, and to extrapolate our orbital inclination angle, we extract 90 degrees from 2.7 degrees, and we end up with an inclination angle of 87.3 degrees, which is very close to 90. So essentially, we are in a polar orbit. If we look at the side view, and let's accelerate time again we'll be able to see our shuttle right here um, executing an orbit it's going up towards the north pole will loop around the earth and come back to the south and back and forth by the way this here is uh, just an indication of where the solid uh, boosters are the left and right one i don't know why they're displayed here and there i can't seem to find a way to get rid of them so anyway you can ignore that but here's our shuttle here, and you can see, let's accelerate time a little bit further, and you can see it going up towards the North Pole, and then it will come back down. And that's very close to uh, 90 degrees 
but we are at currently at 87.3 degrees so that's fine and dandy however um, if you want to be closer to an equatorial orbit you need to change the inclination of your orbit from 90 to whatever inclination angle you need so let's go to the whiteboard and um, let's see um, how we can calculate uh, that so in order to calculate our uh, uh, energy needed to execute a uh, orbital inclination angle change we need to um, figure out first um, the angle called theta which um, is the current inclination which is uh, what we have figured out to be 87.3 degrees minus our desired inclination angle let's say we want to go for um, an equatorial orbit so that would be a zero degree inclination in the equatorial plane so theta would be 87.3 degrees the um, initial velocity we call it VI is what we measured at the equatorial plane a few minutes ago which was 8.149 kilometers Per second. So with these two elements we can plug in the formula delta V equal to 2 VI sine of theta over 2. Delta V is essentially the velocity change that is going to be required to change uh, the orbital inclination angle from 87.3 degrees to 0 degrees so if uh, we go ahead and pl plug this in and we're gonna go ahead and bring in our trusty HP uh, 41CX replica calculator and let me go ahead and create a small program called incline um, which will do these calculations for me So, the initial inclination is 87.3 degrees. The angle needed is zero, because we want to go for an equatorial plane. And the V initial was 8.149. So, our delta V here is 11.2497. So 11.25, so that gives us the delta V of 11.25 kilometers per second. This is huge. Um, this is much more than we actually ne needed to launch the spacecraft into orbit. Remember, our uh, spacecraft got a tangential velocity of something around 7.7 .7 kilometers per second when we launched and um, this is 11.25 kilometers per second so we need almost double the amount of fuel um, in order to affect an orbital change from 87.3 degrees to zero degrees so clearly there's not enough fuel um, even in the launch configuration to achieve this on the other hand if we set our uh, sights on say a milder orbit orbital inclination change let's say we go for 60 degrees so let's say theta now is equal to 87.3 degrees minus 60 and that's equal to 27.3 degrees right so now that we have that we have theta vi is still the same so let's plug that back in into the uh, calculator so let's run this again so the inclination is 87.3 the angle needed is 60 
vi is 8.149 and now our delta v is a much more uh, uh, usable 3.8462 kilometers per second so delta v equal 3.8462 kilometers per second much more power so we should have enough fuel in the launch configuration we do not have enough fuel in the orbiter configuration where the shuttle is relying strictly on its internal tanks fuel tanks um, to achieve that change but if we switch to the uh, launch configuration with the boosters and the main tank attached then we should have enough fuel to do this okay so that's one part of, of the equation. Uh, we know how much uh, velocity we need to change, but we need to figure out the angle at which to apply the thrust. And in order to calculate that, we have to use uh, the formula beta equal to 180 minus cosine minus 1 of delta V over 2 VI. We already have all these uh, elements calculated. All we have to do is plug them in the formula and the calculator will do that with the current values. Just press run and here we go. Beta is equal to 103.6 5 degrees okay so with that information why don't we go back to the simulator and see if we can do that in practice all right so let's go ahead and um, see how this works uh, as far as doing the orbital inclination change let's switch to the um, front view okay and we're gonna go ahead and keep the time accelerated until the shuttle comes around to the equatorial plane so we'll let's accelerate a little further here and in the meantime we're gonna switch the spacecraft to the f launch configuration again with the boosters and you notice that now we have full fuel. This is a bit cheating, but um, there's really no other way of demonstrating um, how to do this orbital inclination change, this massive orbital inclination change, um, with just the internal fuel uh, supply of the shuttle in orbiter configuration. So we're coming around. There we are, slow down time. Okay, so we wanna make sure that we're pointed straight, straight at uh, the Earth. So for that, we can do go to the autopilot again and click on the Orient, which will basically point the spacecraft to the current planetary body you're orbiting. You click Execute. We have to come back down on the time. It's, it resets the time to one second per second when it executes. So that's that. Then, we need to uh, change our role to match uh, the inclination delta, so the change in inclination that we want to achieve. Remember, we want it to go from 87.3 to 60, and so that's a change of 27.3 degrees. So we're going to go to plus 27.3 degrees on the roll by rolling the spacecraft. Okay, that's close enough. And then we're gonna keep rolling until we, we hit the uh, uh, beta angle we discussed, which is 10, uh, what was it? 103.65 uh, degrees. So why don't we go ahead and keep rolling?
So we're looking at 106, 103.65. here that's close enough and finally we're gonna pitch back up the shuttle to 90 degrees of pitch which means it will be parallel to the surface of the earth we're as close as we can get to 90 Okay. All right. And now we're going to go ahead and accelerate time to one second per second and fire our thrusters. There we are. And there we go. Full thrusters. So first the boosters will burn up, then we'll start using the fuel in the main fuel tank. And what you're going to notice is that the tangential speed is going to decrease at first and then it's gonna go start going back up again. And our target tangential speed is gonna be 8.149 kilometers per second as we have determined uh, earlier on. So now it's going down. I'm gonna switch to distance, to altitude here, see how low we get. So we're not gonna get too low on the, on the orbit here, which is good still well above uh, the edge of space of 65 kilometers. So it's starting to slow down on the tangential speed. And then soon it will reverse and start going up again. Okay, almost there on the reversal. There we go, starting to go back up again. You notice here, it's increasing again. It'll start increasing uh, more and faster and faster. And we will stop thrusting when we hit 8.15 kilometers per second or there. We're almost done with the solid boosters here and they're going to separate shortly. And here they are. Now we're strictly on the main tank. So there was no way we would have had enough fuel um, with just the internal shuttle fuel. Okay. Almost there. There we are. Okay. So, did we make that orbital inclination change? Well, one way to find out is to basically accelerate time um, and come back around to the equator, equatorial plane, and do our inclination, orbital inclination angle calculation again. So, why don't we do that? now have two sets of solid state boosters solid boosters one this is the original one when we launched and these are the ones that just separated from the shuttle they're still traveling along with the shuttle so that kind of muddies a little bit the uh, the uh, labels yeah I don't know why they have the boosters um, represented on the map view but anyway we can still see well enough Go up a little faster here. Oops. So we come around to the equatorial plane where we can then 
perform our maneuvers to figure out what our orbital inclination is gonna be like and hopefully it should be close to 60 if we did everything correctly and I think we did so let's slow down okay there we are okay so we're gonna go ahead and like we did before prograde the flight go in autopilot prograde acute okay now we're gonna go ahead and roll while watching our pitch until we have a pitch of about 90 Oops, we're going the wrong way let's go this way That's probably as close as we can get. Okay. And now we're going to pitch down to a pitch of zero. So we're pointing straight at the earth. So we're watching that number again. So our roll angle now, I mean, is 24.86. So if we subtract 90 from 24.86, and that gives us 90, 24.86 minus 65.14 degrees. So pretty darn close for a uh, manual maneuver again. Um, so we really um, have been able to change our orbital angle then from a, the original 87.3 to 65 degrees. Um, and so um, it's really um, a great achievement under manual control. So let's see what that looks like again. So let's accelerate time. Here. And this is our space shuttle right here and let's switch views and we can see now we're not pointing upwards anymore you can see the shuttle is in this inclination here which is about 24 degrees from the vertical so we have managed to switch our inclination from up close to 90 to 60 you can see the shuttle coming back down here in an inclination path of about 65 degrees. All right, well, great. So while we're at it, I'm going to go ahead and switch to the orbital configuration. And next time, we are going to go ahead and do a spacewalk. And then we're going to try to do a re-entry, deorbit re-entry and landing at the Kennedy Space Center. See you next time.